Hi, I'm Sarah from the Coming So Lovely to Speak to You. Hi, Sarah. Um, so first up, I just wondered what had motivated you to shift from acting into writing and directing and why this particular story of that we see in Made in Italy? Um, well, actually, when I first wrote the script, I, I had intended to act in it. I hadn't intended to direct it, but I, so many years went by between me starting to write it and it ever happening that I had got too old to play the role. So, um, and also by then I, I had written something else which we had tried to get going and uh, it hadn't happened for one reason or another. And now I had it in my head that I'd like to try directing. So I made a short film, which I really enjoyed doing. And the guy who produced it said, what else have you written? Let's see what else you could direct. And I gave him a much earlier draft of Made in Italy. And he said, there's something in this. I think we should pursue it. So it sort of happened relatively organically, the way that I had sort of moved from one thing to the other. The reason it's said in Tuscany is because I had downloaded Final Draft to my computer when I was on holiday in Tuscany. And, I, and, I, and actually I had... I'd done a series of shows where I had not been filming in very nice places. I mean, not, not very nice, but you know, like all my, I seem to remember one of my friends was doing Pirates of the Caribbean in the Caribbean. And I was like in a studio somewhere, you know, in a not very nice part of England. And, and I, and I was kind of like, huh, I need to write something where I get to go somewhere nice. So, you know, Tuscany. Can't be Tuscany, yeah. And, you know, Liam Neeson, first of all, you know, what, what an actor. Um, but then also to have him with his real life son and uh, playing out a story that is very close to them as, as real people in terms of losing uh, a wife and a mother. So what was it like casting with them and working with them on this very, what must have been quite a personal story for them too? Um, I, you know, they were, they were, they were great together. They were really great. And I'm so, I'm so glad that Liam had, you know, honestly, but the courage to offer up his son as someone, you know, he, he, obviously Michael is relatively inexperienced and it's a big deal to be then playing the lead against an A-list film star. Uh, but as you know, we, we talked about it a lot and we agreed that we weren't making family therapy. We wanted to make an entertainment. But I think Liam was right because he felt that they could bring something that you could, you just couldn't act. Uh, and I, and I felt like it is there in the, in the film. Um, and it was certainly there when we were shooting. I mean, it was always sort of hilarious because Michael would direct Liam Neeson from time to time. Uh, which is great because I don't know that any actor has said anything to Liam for 40 years. <laughs> and then suddenly there was this young actor going, no, 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 Dan, don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Do it like, do it like this. It's much funnier when you do it that way. Oh, that's brilliant. And I, I actually lost a, a parent when I was in a car crash when I was a teenager. And what I love in the film is both the authenticity of, you know, the kind of the various and the complicated reactions that you can have to grief. And then also the use of humor. And I, I love the character that, that Lindsay Duncan plays. Um, so was it important to you to have that balance of, you know, reflecting the grief, but also injecting it with humor too? Well, yeah, and I'm really sorry to hear of, of, your, of your loss. You, my father died when I was six. That, that played into the writing of this script. My life has been very funny and it's been very sad at times. And I, I, I had also, when I was writing it, I had read so many bleak scripts in which any form of grief had to be dealt with as being like the end of the world and the entire film was just a misery fest. And that's not what my life is like. There are sad moments. There are some really sad moments, but there's also some hilarious moments and there's some great fun and there's some good banter. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to try and make a hopeful film, you know, or, or I feel like everyone in the world has their challenge, whatever, whatever it is you know, and I, I feel like if we, if we can somehow harness the hope, then we can get through our own little challenges, you know, 
and that that was quite important to me so you know i don't know how successful i've been but i wanted it to be sort of lightly comedic and i wanted it to be gentle i wanted to lead you into a more complicated conversation in a way that you felt safe you know i guess and how does it feel to be putting a film out right now i was just thinking of like the escapist nature of spending you know an hour or so in Tuscany via your film when everyone's stuck at home I mean um, I feel like that's definitely you know I don't want to say we got lucky because who would have had this last year you know but given the last year that we've had I really hope that if nothing else people can go and have a, an hour and a half of lovely escapism see some beautiful Tuscany beautiful food and start planning the holiday that you're going to take on whatever it was at June the 21st when you're allowed to go away <laughs> you know I wouldn't be surprised if Italy uh picked this up from the tourist board and it gets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> immediately makes you want to go there so oh that's uh, good that's well thank good. you so much for your time and for this really wonderful touching film um oh, thank so you Sarah um, thank you very much you. thanks so much cheers James bye bye, bye.